How's it going guys and welcome back to another Trail Makers Creations video. In this video I think we're going to do something a little different. We're going to start with the simplest builds and work our way up to the more complex builds. Some of these builds will have no purpose whatsoever except that they look cool. It was just something creative to build and some of them are just way too complicated and why the hell would you build that? But let's start with the simple one. As you see here we just got a seat. That's because as soon as I spawn in this first creation, this is the Bionic Inchworm. But as soon as we spawn it in, it detaches and it starts crawling away on its own. So all we have left is the seat. So we'll spawn this in here again and you can have a look at it. So this is the Bionic Inchworm. As you can see, he's inchworming his way across the ground. He's made out of nothing but pistons and small hinges and a sensor for his head facing down which activates everything so that's how he crawls and then it's just the timing if you haven't seen the video on how to make things wiggle you can check that out up here using that timing the offset timing as we go back and the speed on your pistons set properly you can get this kind of motion where you can actually get some inchworm action happening now again now he's he's just gonna crawl away on his own of course, we had to make them nice and shiny to accent the movement of the inchworm. And yeah, he just crawls away. I had two of these set side by side like skis underneath the seat. And he'll actually move his seat. Well, two of them side by side like two little skis. And you could probably make one of these super, super long. That'd be interesting. Let's see if someone out there can uh, make themselves an inchworm that's like to maximum 700 complexity. Oh, it'd be interesting to see how long that actually is. Oh, he's at the uh, container. Push, push, push. Yeah, no, you're not tough enough, buddy. He tries. So yeah, that is the first simple build. Doesn't even have a seat on it. Just something cool that I was trying, and it worked out pretty well. So let's take a look at our next build. So our next build here is a mini X-Wing. As you can see, we got some guns. Pow, pow, pow. It does open up into X-Wing mode nice and small. I tried to make it as small as possible. Try to make a super mini so space bar is our thrust. We just need to get off of an edge here and we are out of here. Got flames in the back there and again being so small using nothing but mini thrusters takes a little bit of piloting skill to operate. It flies pretty stable. Left control opens up the wings we are in mini X-Wing mode. Left shift is our cannons. Pow, pow, pow. It's actually decent control for something this small. So mainly mini thrusters. There isn't even any wings on this thing. Oh, who put that thing there? So as you can see, we just have the vertical stabilizers horizontally for the X-Wings themselves, and just stabilizers in the back. There's no actual wings on this thing. So that's a pretty compact way of making a flyer without actually using wings. So then I thought, well, if I'm gonna make a mini X-Wing, then I mean, we gotta make a, a mini TIE Fighter, right? So then I built a mini TIE Fighter. It's not identical to the movies. Don't tell George that I did this, but I'm sure he'll be all right with it. So the mini TIE Fighter is a little trickier to fly because of its shape. We roll it backwards, we hold back, and then we can take off. So this actually has a couple of full-size thrusters on it. Again, wanted to make them a little bit different. It does have a couple of small mini thrusters on there for the equal speed. So the mini TIE Fighter and the mini X-Wing both have roughly the same speed and the same maneuverability so they can fight against each other. This one has four cannons as well, left shift, except we have a burst fire here with our TIE Fighter. Again, this uses only two wings in between the body and the actual vertical panels on either side. On the small seat with our guns underneath there and a wing up front here just to keep the front end up. The, the thing with the shape like this is that it just constantly wants to roll on its own axis left to right axis so so that is the mini tie fighter so then once i had a mini tie fighter and a mini x-wing i was like you know what they just 
that now they need something to defend or something to attack, right? Because, I mean, that's what an X-Wing is for. That's what a TIE Fighter is for. So then I decided, well, you know, we, we could build, like, a mini-game with a Death Star. Uh, I don't know how many pieces that's going to take. But let's see how that turned out. So what I built was this. We have a TIE Fighter, we have an X-Wing, and we have our Death Star. Now, as soon as we get into this main seat here, in the, the bottom of the body here, we get into here and we hit number one, and that basically detaches the two ships and detaches the Death Star, sends it up in orbit up to about, I believe it's 200 feet or 200 meters, and that's where it'll stay as the target. If you choose the TIE Fighter, then you're defending it. If you choose the X-Wing, then you're attacking it. And basically, you're just trying to knock it out of the sky, get it to hit the ground, and you win. Or if you can shoot down the TIE Fighter, or shoot down the X-Wing. So I thought that'd be kind of a fun game. So the Death Star is basically just a light couple of circular rings with some, uh, some rods on the inside, trying to keep it as light as possible. The helicopter blades aren't really there for lift, more for stability as it spins than anything else. We want it to stay in one spot got some gimbal jets on there and some small thrusters as well as some speed sensors to keep it from shifting around and moving all over the place and of course our helicopter engines under there for stabilizers so we'll hit number one and launch that and see how this looks so once that launches we can get out of this seat our ships are now free and clear the Death Star yes there's some rainbow makers on there we want to make it visible from a distance, right, so that when you're flying in, you can still attack it. So it'll hover there and spin like that. Now, sometimes it starts going wonky and taking off. You can see by the actual trail of the rainbow trail that it's turned sideways now. But because of those gimbals, it's going to stay up in the air. Theoretically, it should stay up in the air. So it is slowly climbing at this point. So it gives a little bit of a moving target, which isn't a bad thing. And if you're going to be in the X-Wing, then you probably, one of the prerequisites is don't let the Death Star get away. So chase it down, shoot it out of the sky. Let's go jump in one of these small ships here, get in our X-Wing, and we'll see just how difficult this actually is. And it actually is. It's pretty tough. I've tried it numerous times while I was building. And unless you've got spam of cannons or guns all over your, your flyer, or you're an exceptionally good pilot. Ugh. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, let's zoom out a little bit here. Turn them cannons off until we need them. And shoot, shoot, shoot. So, as you can see, the Rainbow Maker helps it stay visible from a distance. Alright, come on. Come on. Luke, you've turned off your targeting computer. I'm all right, man. I'm just going to wing it. Pow, pow, pow. Oh, there you go. Or you could do that. That works, too. You can just fly right into it. Boom. Death Star, done. All done with that. So, yeah, that is the Star Wars Death Star minigame. That will be uploaded as well. Available if you want to play with your friends or try and build one yourself. That's also really fun. It's a hell of a challenge, that's for sure. All right, let's take a look at our next bizarre creation. So this thing is called the Frog Spider. I know, right? I really come up with these names. <laughs> You'll understand in a bit, it's, it's weird. This is a bizarre creation. I have no idea why anyone would build something like this, but I, I did, because I thought, hey, that'd be kind of fun. So this is like a double walker. So, just in this form that it's in right now, it's kind of frog-like looking. We can just hit W. And he's got some walking animation. The wheels aren't really for this mode. He is somewhat aquatic as well. You can go into the water with him, and he can uh, he can swim. He'll stay keep himself above the surface. Again, he's not super fast, but... Uh, it wasn't really built as a frog to begin with, see, so we can just hold down spacebar. We have some steering. We are floating. So he's pretty slow as a frog walking. So if we need to get somewhere a little quicker, that's where we transform into spider mode, which is number one. And 
we now have a big springy spider. And he walks too. Kind of runs. Is that not just like one of the creepiest vehicles you've ever seen? And again, it's a, it's a challenge just to keep this guy on his wheels. Because he is trying to run. At the same time that he is trying to drive. Now there are some mini thrusters on there to help him move ahead a little bit more. And the wheels were actually a good way to pick up speed without having to deal with friction of the, the blocks on the ground. Nice thing as well, you can uh, his, his legs actually move out to the left and out to the right when he's when you're turning. See how the front legs move out to the side? So that he kind of stops himself from trying to fall over sideways. But again, just pushing forward, just W. And he does his, uh, his walk animation. It's the same walk animation as when he's folded up. So he can be walking like this, and then we hit number one. Oh, and he kind of drops to his belly, but then he still transforms, and then you can just keep on walking. Yeah, I was going to put some gimbals on there to keep him off the ground when he's transforming, but try to use as little gimbals as possible when I can. So, walking frog mode right into spider mode. Oh, he's lost some more pieces. And then W, and he just walks away. Space gives you a little bit of extra thrust. Those little mini thrusters on the body there where the cockpit is. Just for... Ah! Uh... Yeah. Oh, now he's upside down. Help me, help me, help me. Oh, God. Get over, get over, buddy. Nope. Nope. Not gonna happen. So that's the spider frog. That was kind of cool. That was uh, an interesting transform. You go from something as compact to something as big and spread out as possible like that. Two kind of totally different walkers, two different vehicles. Roller walkers, I guess you could call it. Come on, Spider-Man. Get there. Get there. Come on. How tough are you? Can you push that thing? Push it into the water. There you go. There you go. And that's, yeah, way too complicated as far as explaining how it was done. I just put numerous pieces together and then linked them and then tried to imagine it unfolding itself into something large and then folding into something small. Which is always a challenge. Alright, so let's look at our next build. Yes, they are getting more complicated, aren't they? Okay, so our final build for this video is the Death's Head Transport. This is a transport plane, VTOL, totally different design. I just thought I wanted to try and build something as different as possible. This is what I came up with. So if we go into first person, we can actually climb over the cockpit up here inside, and we can see this is our cargo area in here. We've got like lots of windows that we can be looking outside. So cargo area over here as well. So this is designed to carry like 20 dudes and their equipment to be dropped off. There's no back door where they all pile out because they all pile out this way when they get to where they're going. So here's the outside shape of it. We have some a bunch of, uh, you can see a bunch of pistons here on the side. We have some helicopter engines on the front here, some hover pads as well on pistons. Probably thinking, what the hell is that for? There's some wings, basically a square kind of body. We've got some other attachment wings on the side here on hinges. You'll see what those do shortly. We've got all our windows across the back, fairly flat. We've got some landing gear that comes down as well. We've got some helicopter blades on the back of these front wings. Just a really unique design. I enjoyed building it. It was a lot of fun. It took me a while. It took me like a week to build this thing. But this is what it does. It's actually really simple to fly. It's got a virtual autopilot, basically. You can, once you take off and you're flying in your direction that you want to go, uh, you can go take a nap because <laughs> it's going to fly itself almost. So we'll jump into the cockpit here. So this has basically two modes. This is landing mode here where everything is kind of quiet. When we hit number one, that will engage, that will retract the cockpit, which turns off our ground lights and also fires up our flight systems. So number one holds that up into here. As you can see our helicopter engines have kicked in, our thrusters have kicked on. So now with the space bars, our vertical lift, we can just hold space. That'll get us up into the air rotate in the direction that we want to go. 
still holding the space bar. I mean, I can let go of the space bar and it'll stay there on its own. But we want to get up into the air and then we hit number two to transform into transport mode and to engage flight systems. And then once we're at number two, it's it engages the thrusters, it's stable, it's flying in a straight line, it's going to go wherever it is that you need to go. You just need to steer, again, left or right, it kind of flies like a bomber. It's not super fast, it does like 88 kilometers an hour, but it stays up in the air, it stays nice and level. So we'll fly out to the carrier here. W and S do give you small amounts of extra thrust, but those are actually fine-tuning thrusters for landing. But you do have forwards and backwards using S and W. And as you can see on the screen there, the controls are just spacebar, 1, 2, W, A, S, D, and left shift. Left shift is our down, but we'll see that here when we come down to land at the aircraft carrier. So our helicopter blades on the back here are actually giving us stability and a little bit of lift as well. So when we want to land, we want to come to about this far away from our target, hit number two. So we'll transform back down. We can hold back. Oh, kind of overshot our landing. That's all right. We can bring it on back. Bring it on back now. We can slow ourselves down. Should be able to back up a wee bit. Oh no, I've got anti-reverse thrusters on there. All right, that's no problem. We'll spin around. Use our little bit of maneuvering thrusters. Just W and S. Bring these forward. Left shift is to come down. It'll bring you down nice and slow. You can drift. Come down, you can land. Engage number one, which pops the cockpit out. Everything gets nice and quiet. And you're there. All your dudes can come pile it out. And then you can take off again. Pop the cockpit up with number one. Number two, we'll have a closer look at that transformation here. We'll see these front wings come up. Angle down. Our back wings actually rotate out from sideways and it's supposed to be in the air when you're doing that. You can see the back wings rotate out and then ro extend out and rotate forwards. And there's a couple extra smaller pistons in the back there that extend out and I was going to put some... I was going to put some extra helicopter blades on there for stability, but I think I'm at almost at maximum complexity with this thing, so... Way too many moving parts. Lots of hinges. So yeah, it's easy to take off, it's easy to land, it basically flies itself. You come out of flight mode, hold down left shift, bring it down, land wherever it is that you want. Pretty easy to accurately land this thing. Fly it a couple of times. You want to use the space bar to ooh, kind of slow yourself before you hit the ground so you're not uh, losing parts. But yeah, that's the Death's Head transport. That was fun to build. Complicated, trying to get everything to work together during that transformation. Alright, that's all I got for you in this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate all the comments. Thanks to all you new subscribers. Great to have you along. Hope you're enjoying the content. And I will keep on bringing it to you. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day. And we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.